What happens in right ventricular failure? It's a good question. Let's go find out. Okay, so right ventricular failure. Now that's the ventricle failure here, okay? This ventricle here. And this ventricle is going to be moving blood from the deoxygenated side, so coming in from the superior and inferior vena cavas, coming to this right ventricle to be pumped through the pulmonary arteries to come to the alveoli in order to be oxygenated, to be reoxygenated so it can be used for systemic circulation afterwards. Now what happens when this particular right ventricular fails? Well, the reason that we are going to be really concerned about this is that if we can't move blood this way through the heart, it means ultimately we're gonna end up with a decreased amount of fluid in the left ventricle, which ultimately is going to lead to a decrease of systemic circulation, or in other words, blood pressure. And so that's what happens in right ventricular failure. Another thing that's going to occur is an accumulation of fluid over time in the periphery. So in the ankles, in the wrists, all those areas where are very distant, but they require good pressures or solid pressures in order to limit the accumulation of fluid in those areas. But if we have a failure of this right ventricle, we can't move blood nearly as well, increasing the pressure gradient in those areas, causing fluid to accumulate in those areas. So that's what happens in right ventricular failure. So ultimately both ventricles are going to be affected and as well as the peripheral side or the venous side of systemic circulation.